I think the main thing about working with survivors for dentists is to just remember to gain their trust, to take your time uh, and to work with them instead of working on them. I think learning to trust each other, so the dentist trusting the survivor to be able to give them feedback and particularly having the survivor trust the dentist. It's really important. I think if you're working with survivors of childhood sexual abuse, it's important to be very clear about the processes that you're going to follow. Make sure that they understand that they can stop the procedure at any stage if they feel they're not coping. And just, you will have to take it a bit slower than you will for people who don't have those sorts of histories. I'd like to say to dentists that if they're working with survivors, that Survivors have very strong responses and very strong fear responses connected with the work that they're doing and that they need to be patient with, with their patients, so to speak, and um, that they need to be willing to be open to listening to what the problems are and not just saying to them, you know, just knuckle down and get through it because Sometimes there are things they can do to make it a bit easier. Survivors um, have a really hard time in the dentist chair and the, they need to be aware that they need breaks, that uh, they may not be able to even signal that they need a break, so you've got to give them breaks even, you know, just as a matter of course, every couple of minutes stop. And, see how they're going and give them a break. Just really working and listening to the patient and finding out what is going on in their head, wh why they respond and react the way that they do. Giving the patients an out. So it's not conditional that they have to lay there and have this treatment done if it's so unpleasant for them and they need to have a break. Giving the time to the patient. So for example, new patients in dental clinics that we know nothing about who could be, you know, sex abuse victims. Give them an hour for a consultation. Let them talk. Let them say what their fears are, their anxieties, and help them overcome them. Work with them instead of working against them is the advice I would give to dentists. For many survivors, they had control over very little in their childhood that they were told things that weren't true, they had things done to them that they didn't like. So they grow up not thinking that they have a great deal of control over anything in their life. If you don't feel you have control, your life's a series of catastrophes, a series of things that happen to you. Um, and one of those things that can happen to you is that your teeth actually start to decay, that you have gum disease, that your teeth fall out. They don't feel sometimes that they have any way of preventing this. Whereas for most people, they know if you have regular dental checkups, you, know, you have the odd filling, you have the odd cap or crown, all sorts of things will be okay in your mouth.